It's actually been a long time since I've seen this. I, I think I've maybe saw it once or twice when I was a kid, and then that's pretty much it. See, I love this movie. I literally purchased this when KB Toys was still open. Like, oh, so this is definitely, yeah. like, what, like, at least ten years. I love this transition from the MGM <gasps> logo just right into the crowd. Oh, my God. This just looks like every, like, oh, One Direction. One Direction, mm. yeah. New Kids on the Block, all of it. Back. Door lover. <laughs> I just, it's, it's. Just like the homoeroticism of it all. Oh, they really nail it. Like, they study oh, yeah. boy bands they hard for this. They and sync and backstreet. Mm -hmm. I love the marionette thing, too. Like, that's definitely, what, an in sync yes. reference. I love the one guy, though, who's just absolutely refusing to join in. He just, just like, staring lovingly. <laughs> You know, they were just having absolute fun for this whole scene. Oh, yeah. And then they got paid at the end of the day. Target the plane. I love, like, the subtle product placement. Dawn. <laughs> Coca-Cola. There's Bell. toothpaste glued to the side of the plane. Who are they advertising for? The band? Like, there isn't an audience on the plane for them to be showing these products to except no, the band. it's the movie. <laughs> it's literally the movie mocking itself. <laughs> the monkey that is... Totally, like they were. They were ahead of their time with that one. Yeah, Justin Prophesied Bieber. Bought a Justin monkey. Bieber. Yeah. Well, I guess you. I mean, you can't exactly call Michael Jackson because he wasn't like boy band, but he did have a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the cool things about this movie, though, is that it came out like you know what, two thousand and one, turn of the millennium, and it was a big turning point in music. Mm. And they like call so many things that become popular. It's true. You could tell that whoever wrote this movie just had a very good understanding of the industry. Well, the people thought this was shit when it first came out. It was kind of like the whole, like, meta irony that they were trying to show just was lost on so many people. Okay, Les is, like, my favorite of du jour here. He's the tall, skinny one. The t and oh. he's like, du jour beats friendship! <laughs> he's got the Hindu or... That is so early 2000s, mm. like, clothing. He's the zen one of the group. He is. I love Alan Cummings. Like, I swear, the dude can act... Any the, role? Any role. He, he was the best thing in all of Flintstones 2. It's, well, it, yes. That was a horrible movie, but <laughs> Alan Cummings just, like, he's just a delight. And then I think my, like, favorite line in this entire movie... Take the Chevy to the living. That, I mean, that's both a bad and good reference at the same time. It's, I mean, it, it is a good reference, you know, for the historical context. It's from the song, The Day the Music Died, which is in itself a reference to the plane crash mm. that killed Buddy Holly, Richie Valens. I don't know what the point of the gum was. The gum? Oh, he does, like, just stick yeah. his gum right there on the steering wheel. I never oh, noticed no. that. Really? It's all I could notice. I love it. Destroy me seatbelts! <laughs> Destroy me crash, crash positions! positions! Alan Cummings just nailing that landing. You know he did right. it for real, too. I, oh, I no, swear. <laughs> assert, yeah, sure. Is that Apple? That was oh my goodness, totally an right. Apple symbol on that sign. <gasps> you're Aww. right. You know how usually you go into a town and it's got like, oh, we have a Masonic Lodge and a Knights of Columbus. It's Prada. Yeah. It's all the businesses. They like got Virgin Mobile. Was it Kodak, Starbucks, Apple? That's hilarious. That's Oh, it's so good. I never noticed that before. I love the leopard print transition. It's leopard print everything. This whole movie is supposed to be leopard print. That's because cats. <laughs> All that I can think of seeing this is, like, how much production value did they have to go through? Mm. Like, each person has five different, you know, shots of their style or their personality. But really, that's, like, days of filming. Rosario Dawson, though. Like... Rosario Dawson is great. She's, She's one of the amazing. best things in any movie. Right. She has just this, like, sweetest personality in, like, all of her things. But I, I don't get it. I, I know I'm not a musician, but I do not get it when guitarists and bassists just, like, are up against each other. Just, like, ah, uh, Like, just playing at each other. And you can tell that they went to, what, like, a band camp just to learn how to basically look like they know how to play these instruments. But then I'm sure all of these songs were recorded by oh, yeah. actual professionals. I wonder if they actually went and found some town named Riverdale so that when they mm -hmm. go through, the, they could go to like the Riverdale bowling alley and not have to pay to 
have all these signs. It was safe on production value and fly everybody to Riverdale, Oklahoma. Subtle foreshadowing mm. of that split. Foreshadowing the split of the group. I like her Sid shirt. I wonder if that's a Sid from Toy Story or a Sid Vicious reference. I would guess Sid Vicious. Is she holding a dildo? Oh my oh god. Oh my god. It's, okay, is that a curling iron? It straight up looked like she was holding a dildo. It's a curling iron. Thank God. And they're just all wearing pink. You can even see the people in the background. They're all wearing pink, too. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like establishing the world before we even know what's going on. None of the girls in the band, I don't think, wear a bra through like, this whole movie. I don't think Melody wears an entire shirt for this movie. They get a cute actor to play Alan M., the cutest guy in Riverdale, because this guy, I don't know, he looks like a baby giraffe. That's all I say. I, mm, I see that, too. I'm not a huge fan, but... You can tell that he listens to too much Bob Dylan. Did I bust the carburetor? Overload the alternator? Did you build the carburetor? Girls could practically throw themselves at certain guys and they would not even notice. It's true. Guys can be dumb. That headband, though, that's very stylish. Very pink. And he, oh, yeah, they're both wearing pink mm -hmm. because you see them following the Because they're sheeple. The they really did just let Tara Reid run around on this set. Uh, that that face right there that he has, that's the face of, you're not acting, are you? You're right. <laughs> oh my god, she was totally stabbing that stuffed animal in the background you're with that You're right, she, she is stabbing that thing. That's weird. And only pausing to show off her du jour tickets. I love that the record company already knows that, well, thinks that they're dead and they're still selling du jour tickets. I'm in town scouting for some new talent and I wondered if there's anyone worth hearing. I saw the card, man, but I missed everything else. Why don't you start over while I change songs, all right? No, wait. Play this. It's the new single from Du Jour. This guy just... It, I don't care. I'm getting it's paid to be here no matter what. It's mix. <laughs> this guy didn't even read it. He just popped it right in. I think that song sucks. I plug my ears when crap like that comes on. This would have been our friend in high school. Right. I love that the code word that he has for her... It smells like teen spirit. Also, what is he talking into? Maybe that's just to call the uh, hit squad. They'd swipe she her and she is gone. That would have been terrifying. That, was, that is terrifying, like, to just get snatched uh -huh. like that. MTV.com. MTV.com. So, look at you, you're... With the... Rosario Dawson looks like she's about to just punch him she's about out. To go, she's about to go death proof on his face. Fits perfectly in his CD case. Right? This is definitely one of the most like iconic shots of the early 2000s. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure that Meatloaf song is about a couple of underage kids having sex by a lake. I love how this is probably the same plane, but now all of a sudden everything's Motorola instead of Target. Like, it just changes that fast. And this guy's hair is basically turning into a Motorola symbol. Oh, the bus pass. That's not foreshadowing at all. The obligatory beauty montage where they right? were dolled up and made to look perfect. <laughs> this congeniality. Oh, Princess yeah. Diaries. Oh my god. Okay, everybody would love that. If like a team of beauty stylists showed up and made you look your absolute best. Yeah. But then you have to realize afterwards, if you don't keep this beauty stylist around for like the rest of your life, like you're never going to be able to replicate this. Unless you go to beauty school, I suppose. You know, this is the another movie where Rachel Lee Cook plays a hometown girl mm. who goes through some kind of, like, beauty transformation, and then the guy realizes, oh, she really is pretty. All we're missing is Freddie Prince Jr. And they bring in this random girl, one, oh, we'll just cut her hair on this one spot. Oh, brilliant. She didn't even cut it, she just... Loved it. This How is probably the most meta scene, though, in the entire movie, where he just lays out, like, this whole, if you suck, we'll ditch you, and then the whole... Josie's the singer. The public needs someone out front to identify with. Oh, trust me. Our studies have shown that bands that have the word and in the title sell twice as many records as those that don't. But what about the Beatles? Or the Rolling Stones? Or the Backstreet Yes, yes, Boys? well, if you want to split hairs, yes, of course, obviously. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is, like, the moment where he decides to start just messing with her. And Valerie. Valerie, yeah. He just starts messing with her for no reason. And I don't get it. Wouldn't that make sense for, like, the longevity of your cash cow if you don't put, you know, strife in the band? Maybe it would be easier to just control one band member than an entire band. Maybe that's why singers always 
break off and start doing solo careers. I guess that could be where they're going with this. She's totally a James Bond villain. She's one of my favorite villains of all time because, like, she just looks like this fabulous woman. <laughs> and, like, really, she's just insecure. She destroys her Zen garden. She'd have to redo that Zen garden every time to rehide her... Secret panel. panel? Yeah. There could you'd definitely be an easier place to put that. This is where it starts. The fads, the fashions, the product placement. I think this is where they designed fidget spinners. This is basically that scene from Jurassic Park with the dinosaurs. We extract dino DNA. Kids <laughs> don't actually want to buy stuff, so we subliminally make them think they want to buy stuff. We're going to dig deep down into their brains and plant thoughts in their minds. What if they find out about the hidden messages in their music? Ever wonder why so many rock stars die in plane crashes? Overdose on drugs? And I love how they just flat out say, like, yeah, we just killed off all of these people, like, plane crashes, overdosing on drugs. Right. Like, honestly, this is kind of... Cool and also horrible. Yeah, it's one of the families of these people be like, um... Don't mock my family. The Megasound 8000. Although the name sounds ominous, it's actually just a high-tech processor. The birth of synthesizing... The things like that with the whole, like, quantizing mm -hmm. was just becoming a thing when this movie came out. They record it, and then it basically, they Photoshop it into being a perfect song instead of recording track after track and you know layering it and he's like this is how everybody does it mm -hmm. and now for the mainstream musicians that's pretty much how it's done i'm pretty sure that that's actually her singing because it doesn't sound like any of the other songs that we've heard from josie and the pussycats unless they just told the woman who did her voiceover for the singing to, like... Sing like you don't know what you're doing. And now we have to give the exposition of the evil plan. When Josie and the Pussycats play their stadium concert, all the kids in the audience, as well as the ones watching at home, will have to purchase these. Basically, this whole, you know, new age device that she's come up with, mm. this is Bluetooth headphones. That technology, that was a couple of years after this came out. That wasn't even a thing yet. And now, like, that's basically the standard for listening to music. And they have cat ears. Like, headphones with cat ears <laughs> are huge now. So it looks like those 90s headphones, mm -hmm. they basically just cut the wires off of them and glued cat ears on top. And neither will you. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I hate this, though. This whole scene basically just... Derails the whole friggin' movie. This joke just drags on for too long and then they do it again like okay can we just go on with the movie now and you can tell that alan m isn't part of the trends because he's wearing his led zeppelin shirt and his very 70s pants. shaggy pants mm -hmm. yeah those are shaggy pants like oh i never noticed she was pretty until i could see her back <laughs> even though she was wearing tank tops like <laughs> right <laughs> Oh my god, like the moment a girl gets like a makeover and a guy suddenly notices her is so irritating to me. Like, if a guy hasn't noticed you until you what look more decked out. He's clearly not into you for your personality. I think it's just really a bad depiction of how they treat guys as like just stupid. Yeah, that's true. Like, oh, guys are just too stupid to notice mm -hmm. like how hot girls are. <laughs> oh, this party. This would be like every party... I've ever been to where I'm just walking around like everybody's staring at me. <laughs> I know that I don't go to parties. I think this should have been a huge like red flag because this is like every like insecure girl from high school's dream is just having this <laughs> beautiful music number. That Everyone turns their head when you walk into the mm -hmm. room and she started this whole like elaborate entrance before they could even see her. Mm -hmm. Nobody could see her at the top of those stairs. No. And then this is weird, too, that she just pulls them, uh, them away from the party. Come oh, let's to my go. creepy, like, adolescent teenage girl room. Oh, my God, this room is my nightmares. Here's what I'm saying. Like, some, what, 30-year-old woman is like, oh, come back to my super pink bedroom with dollhouses that's clearly <laughs> set up to attract children and come sit and let me touch you and massage you. Oh, she even has candy to give them. Like, this is straight up Predator vibes. 
What I think is funny is that she has like these fabric swatches glued to her chest. I feel more sorry for Fiona than anybody else in this movie because she seems to like just really need somebody to talk her issues out with. They're ready to split up the band because they feel like Josie is like easier to manipulate. Like I don't know how they started out thinking that. You know, now I'm wondering though if that whole thing in the beginning with DuJour and addition cocaine has me with a goatee. When everybody knows I shaved into a soul patch for the Don't Tell Your Papa video. This is wiggity whack Wyatt. It's supposed to be on top of this. I wonder if Wyatt was, you know, planting these whole little seeds of deceit within the group. You would think, <laughs> though, that they would have a smarter plan than sending these girls literally to Carson Daly from TRL. I get that they were trying to, like, show, like, how embedded this, like, conspiracy was in the music community. But, like, really, Carson Daly is a murderer for hire. They are able to manipulate her so much that she just turns against her friends in the next half hour. Like, that makes absolutely no sense. Like, it's the brainwashing. It's powerful stuff. Yeah, but I feel like it would only be that powerful if you were, like, a really weak-minded person. That's true. Alan M. Again, trying to be Bob Dylan in a bar. He's just trying to play his acoustic guitar and harmonica. Clearly, this is not the crowd that's going to be into your music. But what we have here is Carson Daly hitting a cardboard cutout of his ex-girlfriend and then chasing his future fiancé with a bat. This is just one of the jokes that would not pass in the post-Me Too movement. Can't you see the chemistry between the two? Mm. That fire in her eyes as she offers up Britney Spears' face? Right. <laughs> this guy, though, with the whole, like, impression. Honestly, I think this might be the worst thing in the movie. Yeah. It's because it's random. We don't know who this guy is. I don't know who this guy is. I don't think he was famous in the early 2000s. It's literally just some random guy that they've brought in to give impressions of celebrities that do not age well. Bill Cosby, and he's going to kill you after the stick my spoon in you put me. Ooh, Bill Cosby. I'll take like three more of those scenes that derail the movie just to cut this guy. <sighs> Josie, we have to talk to you. How did they let the two of you in here? I specifically told the front desk, no visitors. Oh, this scene. It's just so unbelievable to me. Right? That's one of the things that I think is pretty evident in the last, like, third of this movie. They have this great concept of, you know, we're going to build this world of meta-references, and we want to make this movie that's a criticism of the music industry. Pretty good foundation for a movie, and then they just don't know how to end it. They don't know how to tie it all up at the end. Like, oh, she's supposed to be the biggest star in the world right now? She's just walking through the streets of, I'm assuming this is New York or L.A. Fans aren't flocking to her and crowding around her. And they just let her wander off by herself while they're trying to, like, control her. Is this, this an acid trip? What's right? happening? So she totally scratched her open belly. A couple of $20 bills that would have been picked up five seconds ago. Some dude walking by would not have helped her up, but he would have reached down to pick up that $20 bill oh, yeah. without breaking stride. Oh, yeah. I love how she realizes something's wrong with the music. Right. I wasn't acting like this before. The power of friendship breaks hypnotism. No! This dude looks like he was doing whippets over there in the corner when she walked in. Like, that's not Red Bull. This dude is definitely on cocaine. Will you help me, please? I thought you were my manager. Good thing the CD didn't break when you fell. I'm gonna push knobs and pull buttons <laughs> until I figure something out. You put that in front of me and I would probably put push something that was bad. You should have a solo career. You could have your own primetime TV series. We could call it Josie and run it right after Will and Grace. Oh my God, that's Mr. Movie Phone. Is it? That's a dated reference. <laughs> What does she think she's going to do? Like, we're going to go get help and go to the police and show them this device? <laughs> I love this. Wait, Carson wait. Daly, though, is now beat up. Putting oh on a second God. pair of headphones. Dude's got a concussion. Right. And nobody's <laughs> wondering how he got that broken arm. Live streaming. That's before it's time. Right? Live streaming a concert. I love how they've got her dressed in blue. Who forced her to change, though? <laughs> like, right? sorry, but I'm going to, like, make it as hard for them as possible. Roast your friends? Or play the show. Play your show. Roast the friends. Roast your friends. Play the show. What's it to be? Like, this'll make this her will, do it. Right? 
they're not even tied up yet. I mean, like, you don't see them tie them into the car, and then yeah. later Josie's, like, you know, untying them, and they're like, when were you tied up? Because now it just looks like you're sitting comfortably in a car as it spins around on a lazy Susan. I love how stupid you are. <laughs> right? I love you because you're just dumb, and it makes me feel better about myself. I feel smarter around you. And Valerie, you're just the most wonderful person, and we all suck compared to you. Seriously, though, like... Why is it every, like, friendship movie always ends with them having a fight and then getting back together at the end? And then the, the big old pumpy speech, and I, and I love you, and I love you. I was I never not your friend. Oh, and then this. She just pushes her over. Oh, we're all friends. Move on. This is why I kind of love her. Like, she might be my favorite villain of all time. Who the hell are you? I love that DuJour shows up, and like, everybody else in the band is just destroyed, but Les is fine because when they landed the Metallica concert, he knew Enter Sandman, and that saved his life. It doesn't make any sense, like, if you just start shouting out Metallica lyrics, they're not going to be like, oh, let's stop punching him. Maybe. Also, Enter Sandman, probably one of the hardest songs to get a group to join in on. It has a build to it. Apparently the fans even beat up the monkey. Oh my goodness, the monkey is in it. The monkey's in a full body cast like wow. the rest of them. And he just hit it! That makes Metallica fans look bad. Right. And now the rest of the band will never be seen ever again. They're just gonna stand there right. in the corner. Tara Reid essentially taking down some guy who looks like a martial arts master. Kind of scared of her now. Right. I love this. They make it look like they're about to, like, have some sort of, like, epic battle, and they just slap it out. <laughs> and Rosario Dawson's just, like, clothesline him. <laughs> but who choreographed this fight? Somebody who had a lot of fun. Yeah, this is our own fault. And here is the meta moment that depicts all brands everywhere. Fiona is the most jerking girl in the world! Everybody loves Fiona! We want you to think we're cool. So you'll buy our stuff. Like us, please. It really is what all advertising is at its core. Mm-hmm. It's kind of awful that they just sort of, like, shreked it, where, like, you know, ogres end up with ogres. Yeah, only beautiful people can be with beautiful people. But they do kind of call it out, though, where it's like, is this really the moral that's going to be in our movie, essentially? Like I said, it just seems like they had something yeah. and just did not know what to do with it. So, yeah, he's an albino wearing a wig this whole time. And she had a... She thing. had front teeth capped. Clearly, these teeth were bigger than the ones that she just had. This is This is bull. weird. Like this is, like, this is such a weird way to, like, finish off your villains. Right? Holy shit! That girl's got a skunk on her head. Oh, jeez. That's just your hair. Sorry, but that's, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the funniest lines in the And movie. I love how it's not even known that the government was behind this the whole time. Right? It even gets meta with the whole, like, government guy who's like, yeah, we were in on it, but we needed a fall guy, so. And also, Come we decided us. movies were better to put in <laughs> some little messaging. Like, once again, a wink to the audience. And I love that, too. With this, like, join the army. Right? <laughs> Oh, this part, though, just watching everybody take off their ears because she took off her ears. Right there is the perfect depiction of, like, Oh, I, I'm going to buy this shirt because Kim Kardashian's wearing this shirt. This will make mm. me more like Kim Kardashian. We're going to play the real us. And if you like it, cool. And if you don't, that's okay, too. Right. Because it's okay to be who you really are. And that's the moral of our movie. Oh, and then we have to throw in this thing where Alan M. impossibly right. yells from a screaming crowd. My you goodness. cannot hear, barely hear the person next no. to you who's standing like an inch from your ear, let alone somebody who's screaming from the back of the friggin' right? crowd. The dude's in the crowd, in front of the speakers. Ugh. She probably wouldn't even be able to find him. Like, what did he do? He said to the people around him, I'm in love with Josie and I have to tell her, so place right? me up on your shoulders. That's, like, 80% of the guys in the freaking crowd. Like, this kiss. Uh, oh, it does not look good. Ew. Looks like he's rubbing his lips all over her face. She goes over and says what we're all thinking. Like, Can we end this movie now? <laughs> what is Alan doing in the background there? He knows how to play guitar. 
Oh, and then a montage of all the times we've been friends, because now we're still friends. This is where we came from, and this is where we are, because you haven't watched us for this past hour and a half. Right. And on a song. It's great when movies end on a song, because they don't know what else to do. <laughs> yeah, this is a thing for a little while in the early 2000s, of, oh, we're gonna end our movie with everybody having done a dance number throughout the whole and like filming process. all of our bloopers too so everybody sees how quirky and cool this cast was right oh we had a great time filming this movie and we probably got paid a lot of money to do it aren't you envious of our life i still really love this movie yeah it's great it like i said it's pretty good in its critique of like the music industry mm. like it's great in the ways that it's ahead of its time it sort of makes it timeless in that sense but then it also really dates it in a lot of like the references being based on actors who were popular at the time. At the time. Well, they also still try to make it look really 70s esque too, because that's when the like the comics were based on was like the yeah, 70s. Yeah, that's when they came out. So there's like the like a lot the, of like the pants or, and uh, the background set design mm -hmm. and the clothing. While it might be early 2000s, it's also very 70s as well. It was honestly a really great and funny way to make yeah. Josie and the Pussycats. It's a very well put together movie. It's I, basically a giant music uh -huh. video. My biggest thing with it is it just kind of falls apart there at the end where it's oh, like, okay, Peter. we're gonna just gotta put an end cap to all these stories somehow. <laughs> but Pretty great movie, I'd say. And, and like it's, it's funny. It, if you were at all conscious during the early 2000s, it's definitely <laughs> one right. that you're gonna watch and be like, oh my god, right. Carson Daly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he was a thing. He was a thing. And then wasn't. Carson Daly? Carson Daly. Carson Daly. Bye.